streaming on CrossroadsToday.com. Scott Mandel, the Republican candidate for U.S. House District 27, talked border security in an exclusive interview with 25 News Now. We have the story. And at the White House, the Biden administration says they're canceling just over $1 billion in student debt. That's all part of their new repayment plan, Save. What you should look for to find out if you're eligible. Plus, a shakeup at top aircraft maker Boeing. Following a recent plague of issues with its airplanes, the company announced they're replacing the leader of their 737 MAX program. The details on this story and more coming up on Sunrise. And if you've been loving that beautiful weather we've had all week, we've got some more coming our way today and even next week. We'll take a look at that in the weather coming up. The Victoria West girls chasing down a district title. Here from their lone senior coming up in sports. You're watching 25 News Now Sunrise. Good morning and thank you for joining us. I'm Carolina Astrain. And I'm Parker Cox. And today it's the 22nd day of February 2024. It's 6.30 on our Thursday morning. It's Friday Eve. It is Friday Eve. And we had an Amber Alert for you earlier. We'll have more details on that after our first look of weather. But we want to remind you all it's Margarita Day and California Day. Oh, I'm definitely going to be celebrating Margarita Day. I'm also going to be celebrating Chili Day. <laughs> it's Chili Day as well. A big fun day today. I like a little champagne margarita. A little, little pre-Friday action. <laughs> All right, Parker. Well, before we start making those margaritas, what do we have for us weather-wise? Well, honestly, Carolina, you might as well start making those margaritas early because <laughs> the weather calls for some party time because we are having some more beautiful weather coming our way today, tomorrow, the next, all the way until next week. Till we get that next cold front coming our way next week. We'll take a look at that in just a second. Because right now, if you're all tuning in, you're looking live here in eastern Victoria where it's still pretty cloudy out there this morning and that cloudiness is bringing us a nice warm temperature of about 66 right here in Victoria. But with your dew point five degrees off of that temperature, you have an 84% humidity, so it's a little like just a tad tiny bit humid, but nothing crazy like we're used to down here on the coast. But looking at the humidities all across the crossroads, we are all below that 90% threshold, so we're not expecting any fog like I thought we might see this morning. So I guess that's actually good news. You don't want to see any fog. But look at your weather headlines for the rest of this week. We do have a cool front slash dry line. I, I think I'm going to call it a dry line. That's arriving late tonight, right around one or two in the morning. Going to cool us off just a little bit, but we do still have more warm and breezy days coming our way with our next cold front officially on the horizon coming next Wednesday. We'll take a look at that later as well, because right now, like I said, all of us starting in the 60s this morning. Very fantastic morning, but warming up to the 80s today. I think we're going to hit about 81 today, making it the first day that we're in the 80s this year. But we do have a weak, weak cool front slash dry line. I'm, like I said, calling a dry line coming late tonight, giving us a little bit breezy weather coming our way tomorrow. But we'll take a look at that and those temperatures coming next week after that front and more in just a few more moments. Back to you, Carolina. Thank you, Parker. An Amber Alert in Houston has grown to a statewide search this morning. Authorities say they're searching for 13-year-old Cecilia Alvarado. Witnesses say they last saw her yesterday around 10.30 p.m. in the 1600 block of Sunshine Street. She's reportedly wearing a gray shirt and black pants. Authorities say she's with an unknown man and they believe she's in grave or immediate danger. Call 91 if you have any information. Republican Scott Mandel vying for the District 27 congressional seat. The Corpus Christi native says he wants to better represent those that live in District 27. Mandel graduated from Texas A&M Corpus Christi in 1998 with a master's degree in public administration. He worked in law enforcement for 10 years, specializing in cases involving missing and exploited children before going on to own a security company, which he's managed for the past 33 years. If elected, Mandel says he wants to focus on securing the border. We need to fortify the border. We need to put forward operating bases on the border. I built a plan called Abacus, America's Border and Immigration Control and Unified Systems, which calls for forward operating bases on the border. And that will secure our border. Secondly, we need to let the country and the world know our border is closed. Mandel says he's pro-business, pro-life, and he supports the Second Amendment and veterans. District 27 covers 14 counties, including Goliad, Jackson, Lavaca, and Victoria. And here's a look at the other candidates on the Republican ballot in District 27. We have incumbent Michael Cloud, Chris Mapp, and Luis Espandola. Luis will join us today in studio for 25 News Now at 5. 
And the winner here will face the Democrat who wins the primary election on March 5th. Early voting victory for the March 5th primary continued Wednesday. The numbers from the Victoria County Election Administrator look like this. 316 people voted in person early yesterday. 595 total votes so far. Five mail-in votes were received yesterday, a total of 160 mail-in votes so far. 60% of voters anticipate political violence in the U.S. That's from a new poll by the UT Texas Politics Project. It's in response to the 2024 election results. 24% of those polled believe it's very likely the U.S. will see political violence and 36% say it's somewhat likely. Turning now to our top story across the nation, the Biden administration canceling $1.2 billion in student debt for over 150,000 borrowers under its new repayment plan. This phase of the Saving on a Valuable Education or SAVE plan comes six months earlier than originally planned, and it will also, and it will go to almost 153,000 borrowers who have been in repayment for a decade or longer and originally took out $12,000 or less. Under the SAVE plan, a borrower can receive forgiveness after an additional year of payments for every $1,000 borrowed above $12,000. The U.S. Department of Education says eligible borrowers will receive emails from President Biden and do not need to take any further action to receive the relief. Boeing Wednesday announced the leader of its 737 MAX program will leave the company. The announcement comes as the aircraft was plagued by issues. In an email to employees, a Boeing executive announced leadership changes, which included Ed Clark, the head of the troubled program. The message said the moves were part of the company's enhanced focus on ensuring that every airplane they deliver meets or exceeds all quality safety requirements. The aircraft maker entered the spotlight in January when a door plug on an Alaska Airlines plane built by Boeing detached midair. All 737 MAX planes were grounded in the U.S. for inspections as the Federal Aviation Administration intensified oversight of the company. And here are some of the top headlines you can read in the Port Lavaca Wave. The Calhoun County Commissioner Court gave authorization for the purchase of new firearms for deputies. Plus, a church in Port Lavaca held their annual pancake supper on February 13th. You can read these stories and more at theportlavacawave.com. And the time is just about 6.37 on our Thursday morning. Remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. Here's a look at what's coming up on 25 News Now Sunrise. The City of Victoria held a groundbreaking ceremony for a new public safety headquarters. I'm ABC's Perry Russell in Washington. A landmark ruling in Alabama on embryos is now affecting IVF treatments. That story coming up. And also coming up after the break, we'll take a look at your school bus forecast, followed by your weather and health forecast. And later on Sunrise, we'll take another look at the cool and the cold fronts coming our way this and the next week. Hi, I'm Detective Kelly Gibbs with the Victoria Police Department. Victoria Crime Stoppers is seeking information about the murder of Christina Marie Gowans. On November 7, 2002, the body of 24-year-old Christina Gowans was discovered at the 100 block of Spring Creek Drive. If you have any information about the murder of Christina Gowans, please call Victoria Crime Stoppers at 361-572-4200. You can also submit a tip by using the P3 Tip app on your Android or Apple device or by visiting our website at www.crimestoppersvictoria.com. All tips are anonymous, and if you give information that leads to an arrest or charges being filed, you can earn a cash reward. With Victoria Crime Stoppers, I'm Detective Kelly Gibbs.
Well, good morning, Crossroads. If you're all tuning in with us this morning, you're looking live in Quero, where, yes, it is still pretty cloudy out there this morning, but that cloudy skies is exactly what's giving us a much nicer, warmer temperature out there. It's right now about 66 degrees up there in Quero, much nicer than the 40s, 30s, and even 30s that we had earlier this week. But dew point for four degrees off of the temperature, you have an 85% humidity. So it's just a tad humid out there. Nothing crazy, though, that we're like, like we're used to when we're in the 90s. But not too bad of a morning if you're seeing your kiddos out the door. Going to be about 65 or maybe like it is right now, about 66. But as we're heading back home, it is going to be very warm. Getting up to the 80s today for the first day of the year. It could be 81 is what I'm thinking for today under those mostly cloudy skies. But with that nice warm weather today, we do have a little bit of tree pollen. Might be a good idea to take an allergy pill because I had a little bit of sniffles already this morning. But UV index is also going to be moderate today under those mostly cloudy skies, which is pretty normal. But we do have a weak cool front coming tonight, dropping us back to the 70s. And then we're going to warm to the 80s. And then our cold front, our first one, is coming our way next week. We'll take a look at that in just a few moments. Back to Carolina. Thank you, Parker. Victoria West girls soccer with a big showdown this Friday and the Bloomington Bobcats hang a banner that will last lifetimes. Here's sports reporter Zach Brown. The Bloomington Bobcat basketball season may be over, but they got one more shot to celebrate. On the All Bloom All Sports Booster Club page, they hinted at a surprise earlier this week, and here it is. The banner that will forever hang in the Bloomington gym that says 2023-2024 District Champions. They finished in a three-way tie, and as I've said before, this was the first time in at least 20 years they can say this. They do graduate some very talented seniors, but the tie turning over at the Bloom. Over on the soccer side of things, the West Ladies having yet another fantastic year after beating Ray 2-0 the other night. The girls are 8-1 in district. That one loss came to Gregory Portland, who always seems to have the West girls' number, and that's exactly who they're going to play this Friday at 5.30 here at Memorial Stadium. They have one senior, that is Nadia Rodriguez. I caught up with her to get her thoughts on this important matchup. Ever since my freshman year, we have not beat them before, so they're kind of our top challenger. After this, we don't play them anymore, so this is our last chance to beat them. And in order to get the win, I say we have to do some hardcore defense and finish. Defense was a big focus yesterday at practice. They were so close last time, the West ladies chasing down that district title, but they pretty much have to win this Friday to keep those hopes alive. With your 25 Sports Now, I'm Zach Brown. Thank you, Zach. All right, we want to invite you all to experience our digital streaming service, Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, and you just search Crossroads Today Plus. New reaction this morning to Alabama becoming the first state in the country to rule embryos are people. Now one of the largest hospitals in the state has stopped IVF fertility treatments. Gabby and Spencer Goidel are trying to have a child after three miscarriages. Gabby was approved to start her IVF medications in Alabama just days ago. We started thinking about what we would do if our clinic shut down. It just injected so much uncertainty and anxiety. Their uncertainty stemming from an unprecedented decision by the Alabama Supreme Court ruling frozen embryos are the legal equivalent of children and destroying them could be considered a crime. The Alabama decision is tied to wrongful death cases where frozen embryos were accidentally destroyed at a fertility clinic. The White House saying this type of chaos was expected when the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. To say that every single embryo is a child is just factually incorrect, flies in the face of science. With in vitro fertilization, families can freeze multiple embryos, bettering their chances of having a child. We know that there are hundreds of thousands of embryos that are discarded through the IVF process, killed and lost. And as pro-lifers, we believe that that's an unethical treatment of, of human life. In a statement, a spokesperson for the Medical Association of Alabama writes the ruling will likely lead to fewer babies. Gabby and Spencer say their clinic in Alabama will continue their treatment for now. They view protecting embryos as important, but what about our chance of having a family? Shouldn't that be protected as well? This will be a hot button issue on the campaign trail, and we are still waiting for a decision from the Supreme Court relating to access to the abortion pill nationwide. That ruling should be made in the next few months ahead of the election. Perry Russum, ABC News, Washington. 
And that leads us to your viewer poll. You can scan the QR code right there in your screen to take part. We ask you, are embryos children? Okay, let's take a look. 37% of you say yes. That's less than the last couple half hours. And 60, let's see, I think it's 63% of you say no. All right, thank you for taking part in our viewer poll. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to keep taking part. The city of Victoria held a groundbreaking of its new public safety headquarters. The new 70,000 square foot space located on North Main Street will house the police department, the fire department, administrators, and a new municipal court. The building has anticipated or has an anticipated completion date of August 2025. Once the new headquarters opens, other city departments will move into the current city hall building in downtown Victoria. The time is now 6:45 on our Thursday morning. Still to come. The National Labor Relations Board ruled that Home Depot broke a labor law. Well, good morning, Crossroads. I hope you all have been enjoying that absolutely lovely weather that we've had all week because we got more coming our way today and even the next week. But that actually leads us to today's weather poll. Today's weather poll ask was yesterday's weather perfect in your opinion? Let's look what y'all are saying. About 40% of y'all say yes, you loved it. I'm right there with you. I loved it as well. I walked my dog out there. It was fantastic yesterday and we got lots more coming. But about 60% of y'all, the majority of y'all said no, it was a little too warm. Maybe it was a little too warm because we got up to 78. But to vote on today's weather poll and future ones, go to crossroadstoday.com slash vote weather to participate and see what everybody else says as well. Now, like I said yesterday, got up to 78 degrees and we started out a little bit chilly in the mid 50s, but we are nowhere near the same. All of us in the mid 60s this morning. All that's because of the cloud cover hanging over us 
and also that continued southerly wind. And in fact, that southerly wind that's going to continue today is going to get us up to the 80s. I think it's going to be about 81 here at the crossroads, making it the first day that we're hitting 80s this year so far. But then we're going to drop down to the 50s overnight tonight. A little bit cooler because we have a cool front coming our way. Actually, really more of a dry line because you can see here on the dew points map, you can see all of our dew points still in the 60s. That is very humid. But then this dry air mass, a little bit of a dry wave comes our way. It kind of stalls out a little bit in the afternoon and evening of tomorrow but, or tonight. But then, like I said, coming right around 1, 2 a.m., that dry line comes through, giving us a little bit of a dry day tomorrow, but also a little breezy as well with those gusts up to 20 to 25, maybe even 30. And we'll take a look at all that more in just a few more moments. Back to Carolina. Thank you, Parker. The National Labor Relations Board ruled that Home Depot broke a labor law when it fired an employee with Black Lives Matter messaging on his apron. The employee, Antonio Morales, refused to remove the messaging from his apron. He was one of several workers that wrote BLM on their work aprons. This took place at a Home Depot in New Brighton, Minnesota, a suburb of Minneapolis, where, where police killed George Floyd. The Labor Board ruled the writing on the aprons was a protected concerted activity to protest racial and justice that took place from August 2020 to February 2021. It also ruled that Morales must be reinstated and reimbursed for any lost earnings. Home Depot said in a statement it disagrees with the decision. Union membership is at an all-time low, but strike activity is alive and kicking. The Labor Department says 2023 saw 33 major strikes involving more than 450,000 workers. That's the most in more than two decades. Some of those strikes included Hollywood screenwriters and actors and workers at all three Detroit automakers. A strong labor market empowered workers to demand and win massive pay increases. They also reached a boiling point after years of stagnant wages while executive compensation soared. Even last year's surge in strike activity was still much less than in the 1940s and 50s when millions of workers walked off the job each year. Still to come on Sunrise, news to know before you go. A toddler is dead following a shooting in North Carolina.
A toddler is dead following a shooting in Charlotte, North Carolina. Police responded to a call for an assault with a deadly weapon around 5.30 on Eastway Drive at an apartment at Wendover Gardens. They arrived to find a three-year-old boy with a gunshot wound. He later died at a local hospital. Authorities say the initial investigation shows a child may have gained access to an unsecured handgun inside the home and likely shot himself. The child was at home with a parent. At the time of the incident, the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department believes the gun may have belonged to a parent at the apartment. Leaders are urging adults to keep their firearms secured and locked at all times inside their homes. The parents of Gabby Petito have reached an agreement with Brian Landry's parents to resolve a civil lawsuit. Petito's family and their attorney released a statement saying all parties reluctantly agree to the settlement to avoid further legal expenses and prolonged personal conflict. The lawsuit claimed that Brian Landry had admitted to his parents that he had killed Gabby Petito before he had returned home by himself from a trip the two were on. It also claimed, by, it also claimed that by not coming forward, during the searches for Petito and Landry, that the Landry's parents acted with malice or great indifference to the rights of Petito's parents. The terms of the agreement were not released. We have a road closure notice for you this morning out of Victoria County. The 500 block of Schubert Road at the Cattle Guard off FM 446 will close starting today. Expect that closure from 9 a.m. to 3. The Salvation Army of Victoria's Life Enrichment Center is set to open March 12th. Construction started September 1st at the Salvation Army's home office. That's at 1302 North Lewis Street. The center is about 2,000 square feet and will feature a classroom with computers, as well as a library, a study area, a medical room where people can receive care and assessments and referrals, a computer station, and a laundry facility will also be available. There was a slight rise in contributions to the Salvation Army's Red Kettle campaign last year here in Victoria. The kettles raised just over $60,000 last year. That was up $600 from 2022. Leaders say donations were down for many Salvation Army Red Kettles across the state last year. Texas has awarded $125 million in grants to rural sheriffs and prosecutors across the state. The Texas Comptroller said in a statement last week an effort to help those law enforcement agencies attract and keep talent in their communities Read this story by the Texas Tribune on our website, CrossroadsToday.com. And we want to invite you to experience our digital streaming service, Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, and Android TV. Just search Crossroads Today Plus. And now we have time for a final check of our forecast with Parker. Parker is a little overcast and warm today. Yeah, this is a little over overcast. Maybe a little, maybe a little towards the mostly cloudy side. But yes, Carolina, you are right. We are quite warm this morning. Right now, about 68 degrees over there in Portland Vodka, and that warm morning is going to bring us a nice and warm day as well today. A little bit humid as well this morning, but not too bad and not enough for fog. But right now, all of us across the crossroads are seeing those mid 60s and the upper 60s along the coast. But today, we're going to get up to the 80s, getting up to about 81 here on the crossroads of Victoria, making it the first day of the year that we're hitting the 80s. But tonight, we do have a little dry line, maybe like a weak, weak cool front dropping us down into the 50s, back to the 50s tonight for your low temperatures in the morning. But then tomorrow, only warming up to the mid and low 70s after that front comes through. And after that front comes through, it's also gonna be a breezy, breezy day tomorrow with that front roughly arriving right around 1 a.m. overnight tonight. And then, like I said, gusty winds tomorrow, probably between 20, 25, maybe even 30 miles an hour. Nowhere near as bad as it was yesterday where we had 37, 40 miles an hour gusts. But after that cool front arrives, like I said, dropping back to the 70s, mid 70s that is, then we're warming right back to the 80s by the weekend and even beginning parts of next week. And then we are going to have another cold front coming our way mid next week. It's the next one. All right. Thank you, Parker, for that forecast. Of course, Carolina. And thank you all for joining us. Have a wonderful start to your Thursday. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today, and join Karina, Don, Mac, and Zach today for 25 News Now at 5, 6, and 10. Make it a great a great Thursday. And enjoy, go and enjoy that nice warm weather.